I cannot believe I'm home again. When you awakened me this morning in Miriam's cottage, I, I thought it was a dream. You were very sleepy and just a little cross. That was because you did interrupt a beautiful dream. I've just spoken with Grandfather and Luke. They told me about the things you said to them. About your not wanting to go to Rome. That Jerusalem held a greater attraction for you. Did you mean that, Basil? Yes, I meant it, Deborah. Then I can tell you my problem. You see, Grandfather has deposited a large sum of gold at Antioch, which I'm to use for the benefit of the great evangelist of Christianity. And there's none who could do it better than you. <laughs> well, it's not so simple. According to the law, until I'm married, my father is my guardian, and the money would be placed in his keeping. The law is clear. In matters of property, a woman must have a guardian, a father or, or a husband. Oh, Basil, how am I to say it? I can't find the words. Please say them for me. But surely this is no surprise to you. Did Grandfather and Luke misread your thoughts? Merciful God, I shall die of shame. Oh, Deborah. You know how much I love you from Joseph and Luke. He said the beautiful lady. I'm so glad for your sake you, you have found someone you can say those words to. I wish you a perfect marriage. Deborah. There is no question of marriage with her. Do you love her? You? Yes, I will not deceive you about that. <laughs> but I will help you. Do anything I can. Anything. Even marry me? On my way to Rome, we can appear in Antioch as husband and wife. Then you will have the gold for your church. <laughs> the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen.
wind is fair, we're ready to sail, my lord. A husband of Antioch about to leave on a journey usually makes a sacrifice to the gods for his wife's safekeeping. Did you do so, Basil? I wouldn't want you to place your dependence on a pagan god, so I've arranged with some Christians to keep watch over you while you live here. There will always be two on hand. To guard the cup? <laughs> but I've hidden it well in my house. To guard you too, Deborah. I couldn't rest content in Rome if I thought you were in danger. Wait, and I shall soon be ready to return home. Basil? Basil. When you see Peter in Rome, to add his face to your beautiful chalice, ask him to bless me. And to bless you too. Will you see Helena while you are in Rome? How do you know she's there? From Benji the Oscar. There was no need to pay an informer. I would have told you had you asked. Forgive my being so... so much a woman. See her, please. I... I urge you, Basil. Deborah. I cannot be put to a test of love between you and Helena. As though it were something to weigh in the scales to see which side outbalances the other. No. I suppose love is not so simple as all that. It would have been very easy, Deborah, when we were in the desert, to yield to the temptation to be your husband. It is not difficult for a man to delude a woman about such things, even a more worldly woman than you. But you Christians set such a great store by conscience that I wanted to be conscientious with my Christian wife. I... I confess I... I was trying to take advantage of my last hour alone with you. To sway you from Helena to me. Perhaps I shouldn't have done that. You see, I've... I've suddenly acquired a Christian conscience myself. Thanks to the pagan. I'm not hurt. Deborah. Love me. Forgive me and love me. For I love you with all my heart. to me from Antioch. I just placed it in your silver chalice. We, we didn't even hear him come in. The holy cup has been taken. And your chalice, too. Don't go, Basil. Please don't. Basil! Time for them to come aboard, Peter, or we shall miss the tide. They are ready, my good Maximus. Be happy in your love for each other. And in your love of God. And now I wish you fair winds to your home in Antioch. And a long life together.
If only I'd been able to restore the cup to you. It will be restored. But for years, and for hundreds of years, it will lie in darkness where I know not. When it is brought out into the light again, there will be great cities, but it may be in that age when man holds lightning in his hands, 